Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to draw a business interior in one point perspective. This is the basic finished um, outline layout that I came up with. And then this is the floor plan that it's based off of. Some things change along the way here and there, but this is the one point perspective version. If you're interested in the two point, that's going to be a different video. So this is the basic floor plan that I came up with. Um, so it's a cafe. So you want to think about what kinds of items, basic items you're going to have in your business. So for me, I have a counter, a glass display case for things like pastries and things like that. I've got a menu board, a shelf over here for putting, you know, coffees and cacti and things like that on it. I'm going to have two um, freestanding tables with chairs. There's going to be a window against the back wall and the vanishing point is going to be near this window. I have a door over here and then over on this side I've got a bar to sit at with three stools and then there's going to be a big window off to the side. Of course other things you want to think about are like decor and lighting. Those aren't things that I included in the floor plan because this is just the basics. So going ahead and getting started, um, this isn't your official business interior project, but we're kind of doing a practice project here. Um, not coloring it or anything, we're just doing the basics. So you still want to start by putting a half inch border on all sides. So lining up your ruler with the edge of the paper and at every half inch mark, we're gonna add some tick marks. This is important to include, um, like I mentioned before, for a variety of reasons. It just makes your art look nicer. It's gonna make it look nice if you put it into a mat or a frame. But also, um, you know, when you start to color in this artwork, the border will just give it a nice finished presentation. So I've got tick marks on all the sides and now I'm going to take my ruler and line them up and just bridge the gaps between them. Okay, so now what we have to do is figure out where we want to put our vanishing point for that back wall, um, which is gonna be somewhere around here. You could put it right in the center if you wanted to. Um, you could also maybe make the vanishing point a little bit higher up on your paper. That does affect how much of the inside of the business that you can see. So basically, if we put the vanishing point right in the center, you're gonna see an equal amount of the, of the walls, the ceiling, and the floor. But if you put your vanishing point up higher, you're going to actually see less of the ceiling and more of the floor, which I personally think is helpful when you're drawing in perspective. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to put my vanishing point about, I want it to come halfway across the paper. I want it to be perfectly centered. Um, so if this entire rectangle that we drew is 10 and a half inches wide, then that means the center is five. 0.25 inches. So I'm going to say that that right there is my vanishing point. Now from that point, we want to draw orthogonal lines to all four corners that are inside the borders here. Okay, so just to start that off, I'm lining up my ruler. So you can see I'm lining it up with the vanishing point and this corner of the box. It doesn't line up perfectly with the corner of the whole paper. So just keep that in mind. Remember to draw lightly. I'm doing this a little bit heavy so that you can see it better on the camera, but it's always helpful to draw lighter because you will have to erase things down the line. Because our vanishing point is a little bit higher up, it's not going to be a perfect X. It's going to, like I said, be a little bit wider up here and it's gonna show more of the floor down here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a smaller box inside of these orthogonal lines. This is going to be the back wall. Okay, if you're not sure what I mean by that, you'll see in just a moment. 
basically the smaller you make this box the bigger the space is going to look inside it's going to be very like long and narrow like a really skinny corridor if you make the box really big you're not going to really have a lot of space to put your furniture and things like that in so i think a good rule of thumb is just to make the box not too big not too small but you want to make sure that these lines are straight they're perfectly vertical and horizontal so i'm actually going to line up my ruler along the edge there to make sure that it's all straight bring a line down I'm gonna do the same thing this way we want to make sure that each end of these lines that we're drawing connects with each other Very good. Awesome. So now we don't want to erase our vanishing point, but we want to erase all of the extra lines, orthogonal lines that are going past the back wall. We don't need them anymore. They're not actually part of the walls of our business. So we can just go ahead and erase those off. We never want to lose our vanishing point. And we don't want it to get too like thick and chunky either. We want to keep it just a nice simple dot in the center there. Okay, so we have a ceiling now. We've got two walls, three walls actually, and a floor. And notice how because we put the vanishing point a little bit higher up here, we just see a lot more of the sides of the walls and the floor than we do of the ceiling, which is good. That's what I wanted personally. Now just as a little bit of an example of what it might look like if it was different. If we turn this upside down and our vanishing point was lower, notice how much of the ceiling we would see. Maybe you have a business where you need to see a lot of the ceiling. Maybe there are things hanging from the ceiling. I just personally find it easier when I'm drawing furniture and things like that that are sitting on the ground to have more of the ground showing. Okay, so I'm kind of looking at the furniture that I've got going here. And I think... The first thing I'm going to do is get this counter done because that's the biggest piece of furniture that I have. So if you can draw a box in perspective, you can really draw any piece of furniture. It just involves a few more extra steps here and there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to establish where the closest side of the counter is. So we know that in one point perspective, let me just do a quick drawing here for you. We start with a square. And let's say that our vanishing point is over here. All of the orthogonal lines go to that vanishing point, and then they cut off somewhere. This is basically what I'm doing right now, is drawing a really long rectangular prism. So I'm going to figure out where I want the edge of the counter to start. I want to leave a little bit of space between the wall and the counter so that there's room for the employees to move around behind the counter, make it a little bit more believable. So we want this square that we're drawing here to be perfectly horizontal and vertical. I think that's a good start there. I'm gonna add another edge. Depending on how tall you want your counter to be, you might bring it up. I'm gonna make mine a little bit taller, bring it up to about there. Again, you want to make sure that you're drawing lightly because you'll have to probably erase lines at some point. Okay, so that's my starting square. That's just like in this little diagram. That's this edge, that flat edge that we can see. Okay. I want to figure out how far I want to bring my counter over. I'm not bringing all the way to the vanishing point because then it'd be going through the wall and it would look kind of weird. I think I'm going to stop my counter. I'm going to stop it about right there. So that's how far down the wall it's going to go. So just like when you're drawing a box from each of your corners, 
you're going to draw some orthogonal lines. I'm not going to draw them all, to, all the way to the vanishing point because they're going to be cut off eventually. So I'm just sort of outlining the basics of where they go. I'm also going to erase the edge of the back wall over here. I don't want it to confuse me. It's just is kind of an extra line right now that I don't need. Okay, so I've got my top of my counter and my side. Now I just need to cut it off where I want it to end. So again, we want to use perfectly vertical lines and perfectly horizontal lines for good perspective. So now I've just got a rectangular prism in my business right here. So that's a pretty simple, straightforward counter. And then you can add as much other stuff as you want. I am going to be adding a glass display case on top of it. Now that might seem kind of intimidating, but it's actually pretty straightforward. We're just doing this exact same process again, but just smaller on top of the counter this time. So I'm going to figure out where I want my display case to start. So follow along with me. If you're not sure what we're doing, just do your best to follow along and you'll start to see it come through as we're drawing. So that is where this is where the counter ends and the display case begins is this line right here. Figure out how tall you want your display case to be. I'm just going to make mine like that tall. I'm just doing the same thing that we just did. I'm just drawing another cube on top of the cube of the counter. Okay. Now I don't need to draw an orthogonal line here because they're already here. The counter already has the orthogonal lines on the bottom of the box. But we do need to add a couple more right up here. always go to the vanishing point. You don't just want them to be floating off into space. Okay. Continue with another vertical line to end that side of the display case. And we'll cut it off. Let's actually cut that off a little bit lower. I'm going to draw the new line first and then erase the old one. Let's say it cuts off right there. That looks better. Now, I want my case to be see-through, so I'm not going to erase the wall here that we can see, but I am going to add this back edge of the display case right there. So now we've got a see-through case. Now, here's sort of an interesting thing that you can do if you want this to be rounded. Some cases like an ice cream display, for example, instead of having like perfectly flat sides of the glass, it'll be rounded. That's actually really easy. All you have to do is just take your side of your cube here and just cut it into a half circle on both sides and then just erase the extra lines. Make sure you don't accidentally erase your wall lines. We want to keep those. So that's just kind of a fun, easy way to do a rounded display case just like so. Okay, so we've got a really basic piece of furniture here now. I'm going to go ahead and add in a doorway now. If you do a door on the back wall over here, it's actually very straightforward and simple. You're just drawing the basic outline of the door. However, if you're doing a door on the side, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So I just want to show you the steps to do that. Okay, so let's say that you wanted to add a doorway in here. Um, if you want to put a door on the back wall, it's actually a lot more simple of a process. You're just kind of doing the outlines of the door. However, if you want your door to be on the side wall, it's got a few extra steps to give it that sense of three dimensionality. So first figure out where you want the edge of your door to be. So that's one edge. And I think I want it to be about this wide and it's a pretty tall doorway. Now, to get the top of the door, you want to line up your ruler with one of those lines you just made and then draw an orthogonal, just like so. Okay, so that's the basic outline of the door. Now, if you want the door to have thickness, you got to do a couple things here. 
the first thing that you got to do is take your ruler, line it up horizontally with this corner right here where the side of the door meets the floor. Do a very short line. Okay. Do the same thing for the top of the doorway. Line up your ruler horizontally, line it up with this top corner right here. Draw a short horizontal line. Take a vertical line and connect those. If you got extra, just erase it. Okay, and now what you do, and this is kind of tricky, so you want to watch this closely. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. You want to take your ruler, line it up on the orthogonal line, or line it up on the vanishing point, rather, and then line it up with that corner that you just made right there. Hold on to it tight so it doesn't slide around on you. And then just connect. And now you've got like a thickness to your door. Again, that's just if you want your doorway to be like open, for example. You could just do the general outline of it and have it just be a closed door as well. But if you want it to be open or have it leading into another room with no actual physical door, that's how you would do it. Okay, so now let's get, um, let's actually get a window on this back wall over here. I want it to just be a nice big window that sort of takes up a lot of the um, back wall. Pretty similar to the door to start out. I'm going to line up my ruler. We're just going to do the basic outline of the window. I think I want it to be about this tall. I want to leave some room underneath of it for some tables and chairs in a bit. So I'm just planning ahead that way. Okay, so that's my basic outline of the window. Now I want my window to have some thickness to it. I want it to have sort of like a window sill. So I'm actually going to go from each of the four corners, I'm going to draw really short orthogonal lines that go to that vanishing point. There's one. There's two. There's three. And the last one. Okay, now with this, you want to take a vertical line and connect the ends. Keeping in mind that, you know, you don't want to just connect the ends as you have them exactly right now. You want this line to be perfectly vertical. So I use my ruler and I line it up against the edge of the paper to help me you might have to cut off some excess lines. Like for example, this happened where I made this orthogonal line a little bit too long. I don't just wanna leave that as it is. I wanna go back in there and just erase that little bit of extra. It's more important that this line that I just drew is perfectly vertical. I'm gonna do the same thing, but with the top and bottom, it's going to be horizontal. There we go. Now we've got a window that has some thickness to it. And this is fun because it is the Cactus Cafe after all. We can put some little potted plants or something like that on there. Okay, so we've got our window. Um, let's go ahead and add a menu to the wall over here. So I'm thinking that um, the menu does not have to be very thick at all. It's actually probably one of the more simple shapes that you're going to do. Have the edge of the menu. I'm going to make it a really big menu so that we can fit all of the different drinks that you can get at this cafe. This is pretty straightforward. All of the lines that are moving away from us go to the vanishing point. And then just finish it off with a vertical line and then erase the extra 
and then you can decorate that as you wish. Okay, so we need some other furniture <laughs> in our cafe right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a bar over here for people to sit at. Um, I'm thinking that I want it to just kind of slightly protrude out from this wall over here. It is going to partially cover the doorway a little bit. So instead of this being like a really big chunky rectangle, like this is actually going to be a very narrow, long, skinny rectangle. So figure out where you want your bar to start on this wall. I'm going to say that my bar should start about Let's say I'm trying to line up my ruler so that it's perfectly horizontal. Let's say that the bar starts here. So we're just just like this. We're starting with a basic um, rectangle, but this one's a lot skinnier. So I think this is good to start. OK, now figure out how long you want this bar to be. Remember, from these three corners, we want to go over to the vanishing point. I'm actually going to start with this corner this time. I want the bar to stop about just before it reaches the doorway. So I'm going to say about right there. OK. Now we want to do the same thing with the other corners. Bring them over. I'm going to bring it to about there. After you do perspective drawing for a little bit, you can get a feel for when you can stop with your orthogonal lines. It takes a little bit of practice to figure out like when to know you can just stop bringing them over to the vanishing point all the way. Just take some practice. OK, again, we're cutting off the edge of the bar right there. And then we're going to cut it off right here. So now we've got a bar and we can erase the lines that go through it unless you want it to be see through. That might be dangerous, though, with people and their hot coffee drinks if it was made of glass. So this is a pretty decent sized bar. If you wanted it to be longer, you could actually just have it kind of go on further if you wanted to. If you ever want to extend something in perspective, you just add more orthogonal line and then give it a new end. Just like so. So I think that this is actually a better length for the bar because I can fit a few more chairs in here now. OK. And then if you want to give your bar feet, you can. They're just simple, straightforward bars that can just come down. However, you want to make sure that they match however far out they go. So let's say that the feet of my bar end right here, like that's the edge of the table. We want to make sure that the foot that goes over here lines up with that. Just like so. OK, now from here we can get some bar stools. This is another simple piece of furniture. Just like we did when we started the bar originally, we're going to just do some really skinny rectangles to start out. So that's one. figure out how wide you want the stool to be. I don't want it to be too wide because it's just a bar stool. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. Just like that. Cut off the edges. OK, and then you want to figure out how far down the feet of the stool should go. This takes a little bit of adjusting here and there to really get a feel for how tall the chair should look. 
but you want to make sure the feet are in line with each other. You don't want one leg to look like it's weirdly longer than the other. So I'll usually draw another line coming down or coming across there so that they can be on the same level. And then the back feet that are further away from us also have to be in perspective. So you draw some orthogonal lines and then from each corner of the stool that's where you know to bring the leg down. So this back corner, line up your ruler. And there you go, you've got a stool. And you just repeat that process all the way back to add more. Okay, so let's add a couple more things. Let's add a table and two chairs over here, and then we're gonna do a small bookshelf. So when we're doing a table, again, you wanna figure out how tall you want your table to be. And we're gonna start with another skinny rectangle just like this. So let's say that I want my table to be about this tall and this wide. Now, when something is in the center of the vanishing point like this, this might trip you up a little bit, but the lines are going, you're only drawing orthogonal lines from these two top corners. So if you don't know what I mean, just watch this closely. I'm only doing two orthogonals there. I'm adding the back edge and erasing the extra. Okay, so instead of you seeing like the top and then two sides, you just see the side and then the top. Okay, figure out, I'm gonna actually do the back legs this time. I'm lining up my ruler with this back corner. I'm gonna bring those legs down to the ground. Same thing over here, you want your legs to be in line with each other. So I don't have one that's weirdly longer with the other. And then to get these front legs in the right spot, you want to line up your ruler with the vanishing point and the legs. Draw some little orthogonals. And then that's where you know where to stop. The front legs should be on those orthogonal lines. So they're in about the right spot. You'll know pretty well if something looks like it's kind of funky, like you got to move something around or shorten something or lengthen something. Okay, and then if we wanted to add some chairs, it's the same process. But I'll show you how to add a chair that has a back to it. So first, let's start by doing our small skinny rectangle. Okay, and now we're actually going to add another rectangle that's going vertically on the side there, okay? Now from here, we've got a few extra steps, but it's all the same process. From these corners, we're going to go to the vanishing point. I'm gonna grab a smaller pencil because that one's a really big piece of lead. This one's a little bit skinnier. So figure out how wide your chair should be. I'm just drawing some little orthogonal lines out of those points. And then I'm gonna just cut them off where I want the chair to stop. Pretty straightforward, and then we can just add some legs. Or keep your legs in line with each other. So this one should stop about there. And then for the back legs.
giving myself some orthogonals so that I know where they stop. Okay, and you would just do that same process for the other chair over here. Okay, so let's do a bookshelf. This is the last thing I'm going to show you today. And this seems complicated, but once you kind of figure out the basic like elements of how to set it up, it's actually pretty straightforward. So follow with me here. We're going to start just like we do with the sides of the cube that we draw. We're going to start with a tall rectangle. And we want it to be fairly narrow. We don't want it to be too wide. So this is a parallelogram, meaning that the sides are perfectly horizontal and vertical. Okay, so we've got a basic skinny rectangle. Now from those corners, figure out how wide you want your shelf to be. So I've got those two lines now, and then I'm going to add a back edge here. However, I'm also going to add orthogonals from those inner corners too, just like if it was transparent. So I'm lining it up with the corner and the vanishing point, bringing a line across. Doing the same thing up here. Okay. Now to figure out the smaller inside part, we want to bring a horizontal line over here, okay, and a horizontal line over in here, and then we want to just bring those two horizontal lines together, just like so, okay? So now we've got a transparent, skinny, rectangular prism. Now to get some shelves in here, basically what you want to do is you want to figure out how thick you want your shelf to be. So follow with me here for a second. On this closest rectangle, I'm going to draw a really skinny rectangle inside of it. Just like that. Okay, so it's a really small skinny rectangle. Okay. Now, from these two corners, I'm going to go to the vanishing point, and I'm going to stop right when it hits this edge right here. Doing the same thing up here, bring it over, stop it right there, okay? Now this shelf is kind of above us, it's like we're looking up at it, so we want to figure out where the bottom, like the underside of the shelf is. To do that, you want to draw from this corner a little horizontal line, okay? And from that corner, you're going to connect it with this corner. So I'm lining it up just like so. I'm going to bring it across. So basically, you just made a really skinny box inside of this really skinny box. So to show you it as a shelf, because it might be kind of confusing looking at it, if we erase this part, because we don't want our shelf to be see-through, unless it's supposed to be see-through. So if we erase that, and then we erase these little inside lines here, you've got basically a shelf inside of a frame. So I could put a little potted plant on it. Put another little one right here. Put some flowers. So you've got a couple of items on your shelf. If we do another one, let's do a shelf that's a little bit lower. So starting down here, if you got lost the first time, try this one with me. I'm going to draw a skinny rectangle inside of here. From these two corners, 
I'm going to the vanishing point and I'm stopping right there. And then from this corner, I'm also going to go to the vanishing point. And I'm going to stop right there. And then you just bridge this gap with a little horizontal line. Once you erase your extra, got another shelf. And this is a shelf where we're kind of looking down at it so we can see items that are actually on the bottom of the shelf this time. Okay. And like I said, if you want to jazz up your business more, you know, think about what kind of decor is going to go in here. Maybe you want to put some lights on the ceiling. Um, if you want to get like recessed lighting where it's built into the ceiling, you might start with you know, an oval light in the ceiling. And then if you want them to realistically get smaller as they move further back into space, whatever you put on your ceiling, you just want to add some orthogonal lines coming out from the edges of them. And that will show you exactly where things are going to fit here. Okay, see how that moves back into space in a realistic way. You could put things like a rug on the floor if I were to just do that really fast, start with your edge. And that's a flat thing, just like the menu that we did. So it doesn't really require a lot of extra attention here. Just doing a basic rectangle and erasing the extra. Just whatever you draw, remember that things are going to get smaller as they move back into space. I might put a coffee cup on the table over here. And then if I wanted to do another one over here, I just want to make sure that those things get realistically smaller as they move back. Okay, so that's the basics of drawing a business interior in one point perspective. Hopefully this helps you sort of get a feel for your own client's business briefing. You know, think about what do you need in your business? Make a list of items and then think about how you might lay out this floor plan. Of course, I changed some things along the way because I realized that I didn't have quite as much space as I thought I was going to. And that's completely okay. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.